Hey, beer bastards, it's Justin. And Jason. All right, what did you get us today, Jason? Today we are going with another Michigan beer because that's all I'm going to be drinking <laughs> here. Uh, from, once again, I think we did one before, but uh, another Dragon Meat. But this is a special release that they only do every two years. It's their triple uh, Bach Lager, and it is called the uh, Dark Heathen. Just the name alone sounds amazing. Yes. I'm a fan of that. Yeah, so this one was actually brewed in 2017. Right there. Uh, yep. yep. It says right on the back of the label, 2017. Boom. Boom. So it's been like brewing and aging for like two years. Yep. Apparently. Nice. Yeah, 12.5% ABV. So this is not messing around at all. Hence why I said we should share a glass yeah. before we go out. Yep. <laughs> Uh, exactly. I want to taste this. something like this fine and this, you know, particular and aged. I want to taste this like clean palate. Mm -hmm. It says to serve at 35 to 42 degrees Fahrenheit. It feels somewhat warm still, I think. Yeah. I think that should be a good. Yeah, it's been in the fridge for just over an hour. Oh, so. that should be plenty. Yeah. That should be good. You want to do the honors? Oh. Crack it open. My pleasure. Oh, hi. He's just going to... And Phoenix yet again joins us. <laughs> All right. And I'm curious how this is going to compare to, like, uh, the Spotten uh, Double Box, because uh, Double Box are one of my favorite beers, but I've never had a triple. Yeah, right away, there's, like, no head to this. Nope. So that's the thing with, like... And this is aged in barrels, right? I believe so. Yeah, because yes. if that's the case, then like all the, a lot of the carbonation is going to escape from the barrel. Mm-hmm. You get that? I think it's just yours glass. Yours is displaying a little bit more of the head. Yeah. I wish I had an actual stout glass, but I don't. That's sorry. That's things I'm working on. But something like this, you know, where it's where you're able to, where you got something toned here, where you're able to, you know, funnel the aromas. That's really what matters. So either one, something like this would work perfectly. All right, let's cheers. Take it. Cheers. Nice and dark. Ooh. Oh, heavy, heavy, roasty, heavy malt, caramel. So much caramel. I'm happy. Yes, I this smell is happiness. Delicious. Like yours looks more dark, but mine like has like some red to it. I see some red to it. Very dark, caramely red. Dark, dark, dark amber. It's a hint of fruitiness, I think. Mm-hmm. That has, like, no bite to it for 12%. No. And it doesn't taste boozy. That's the good thing. Sometimes you can get these, like, super high alcohol beers, and mm -hmm. all you taste is, like, alcohol in it, but not in this. Nah. It just ever so slightly in the aftertaste. Mm -hmm. As you take at the late, take a look at the lacing. There is zero yeah. carbonation in there, but it does tickle a little bit on my tongue. So there's yeah. something, but there's like might as well be nothing. So something like this, and maybe see if it if it has legs instead. You know, but no. Yeah, but it doesn't uh, taste like uncarbonated. It's just. I think it really suits the palate for what it is. Yeah, very caramely, like dark fruits. Mm hmm. What did you say, black cherry? Yeah, I would go with that. Yeah. Monday. Mm. Oh, man. And for being such a dark beer, it's so easy drinking. Yeah. But I would say still sip it, enjoy it. Uh, I did try a couple longer and a little short. The shorter the sip, I get a lot more of the aroma burst. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because there's nothing of this that is off putting. Like, I would actually introduce this to somebody that's afraid of higher ABV beers. Oh, yes. <laughs> this would definitely be one to uh, show them the complexities without that bite, the harshness. Yeah. A little chocolate in there too. Yeah. But 
I do gotta read the back. I wanna see what they compared it to because uh, what Dre Meat is famous for is traveling the world, finding some of the best beers, and then they copy it. So some of the okay. like when they went to Europe, Belgium, Germany, uh, they get the palate that they want, and then they ask, "How can we duplicate that?" Interesting. Yeah. The Dark Heathen Triple Bock is a ruby red lager beer made using the decoction process. Munich and Vienna malts make it very, taste very malty, smooth, and complex. Mm-hmm. I'd agree. And fun little tidbit over here. Um, first brewed as a collaboration in 1999 with Brett Coonan of the Coonan Brewing Company, which is also in Warren, Michigan. Yes. Which... You also, <laughs> yeah, I believe uh, that name sounds slightly familiar. <laughs> he just made a trip over and he made um, a random pit stop for me and popped two other things here. Yeah, so. So <laughs> it just so happens we got a couple of Coon and Beer sitting in the fridge. Yep, now it's display, but I do highly recommend the Drippa. Yeah, I'll bring this up to the camera just because it's kind of hard to see, I think, with the silver and the gold, but trip up. That's a double rice IPA, 9.5%. So yeah. they don't mess around either, people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I would definitely say Dragon Meat and uh, Coonins are within the top 10, if not top 5 breweries in uh, Michigan. And you would never expect them to be in a town like Warren. And anybody in Michigan would know why (laughs) you would not expect it in a town like Warren. (laughs) I see that like happens to be the case with a lot of those like um, microbrews popping up. Like some of the best ones are like, why are you here? There is nothing here. Why is this so good? It's like, and the owners just like, you know, and the brewmasters are like, because I'm good at what I'm doing and there's nothing here. I mean, which is a valid point, but something, oh man, this stuff. Holy Jesus. uh, Dragon Meat is literally just right off one of the freeways. Like when you go on the side roads and all there is like little industrial business. Uh, businesses to the side, mm. you'll go right past it. <laughs> oh, so you don't miss it. Uh, yeah, but luckily they actually did post a side this time. So I'm like, oh. oh. And I still waited a half hour for my friend that passed it three times. I'm like, how? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm, yes. It's getting me a little like tinge of spice right on the on the front of the tongue right mm-hmm. right at the end right at the back just at the front of the tongue which is which is weird you don't expect something in the back of the flavor to be like at the front mm-hmm. of your tongue but it just finishes off with like a little tinge of spice yeah i'm wondering with this one if, it, if you store it properly if it would get uh change at all because since they do store it for two years mm. Would it be good for three, but uh, this is very unique. <laughs> I mean, geez. Oh, yeah. And that's the thing. They Do they barrel age this? Did you say if you knew if they barrel age this or not? Ah. Uh, because it kind of like gives me that fool sense that it's like bourbon age, but it tells me it's not. Oh, uh, I. Uh, I, I did not question yeah. them on the brewing. All I know is it's a special batch. Yeah. And I have seen them use uh, be, uh, uh, whiskey barrel, bourbon barrels before. So yeah. they might transfer it in the process at some point from the barrel right. to a different containing system. I've I've seen that in some places if they want to reuse the barrels, sometimes. Yeah, because I pick up a little hint that it might be like bourbon barrel aged or something yeah. that they might have done that. I mean that's yeah. a, that's a very common practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because like I pick up like those like those like sweet those lighter sweet notes like Mm -hmm. vanilla and like coconut and stuff like that you'll get that out of whiskey but unless you add it into brewing process you're not going to get it out of a beer traditionally you shouldn't no (laughs) 
But what I like is you get the sweetness, but I'm also getting like a little tart that you would get mm -hmm. from like a wild berry. Yeah. It's not like a, it's not a raspberry or a blackberry, but it's like that wild berry with that, there's that little tartness to it. Yeah. I'm still sitting with like black, with like black cherry or like some dark cherry yeah. or something. Like, yeah, I think you're right on that. Mm -hmm. Like it could be a combination of that, like some blackberry maybe. And it's not like, and the nice thing is, is like, it doesn't like sometimes those, um, fruits can be like super, make you get like super dry or sometimes like bitter. And yeah. this is way too balanced to have, yeah. to have like any sort of fruit in there. Like, I would say this is definitely like one beer that I don't think Unless you totally dislike beer <laughs> altogether, I don't think I think you could give this to a Budweiser drinker and they would still say it's palatable. Where we both don't see each other on the spectrum, right? So. I mean, maybe if it was like somebody who's like you know tasted something other than their buds and their millers, but you try to go to somebody you know in and, yeah. and like in South where all they know is like. You know, those gas station yeah. beers, like, they're going to taste that and go like, no, but, Hey, you know. I was very excited when I first went down south uh, over 21 and I saw something called a beer store. Then I went inside and I, and I was sad. So. Yeah. Because you literally walked in there <laughs> and the whole front was a display of red, white, and blue Budweiser. Ooh. Uh, like Bud White, uh, Bud Light, Bud... And then they had something for white packaging in there. And I'm just like, I'm sad. Oh, that sounds painful. Why would you describe that to me? I feel like you should go to beer jail for this. I know, but I saw a beer, <laughs> but I saw, but I saw a beer store, and I'm like... I can't blame you. I would probably do the same thing. I'd probably go beer store and then just go, like, just going with the highest expectations. Like, yes, I'm going to see, like, all these micro brews from the South, something from, like, Atlanta, and then, like... And oh, <laughs> uh, same thing I can get at the gas station around the corner in Wisconsin. Yeah, just in larger quantities. I, I did not check to see. Well, it'd be really horrible if it was three two. Ooh. Oh. No, Wisconsin's not a three two state, but Minnesota is. So I grew up with people coming to the gas station saying, "Is that three two? I had no clue what that was. I don't either. Then I have I found no idea what that is. Because uh, gas stations in Minnesota, they might have changed the law by now, but back in the early 2000s and before that, uh, beer store, uh, the gas stations could only sell 3.2% beer. Oh, okay. So they had a special beer mm. that was less alcoholic and they, yeah, so. Gotcha. So, so you would actually get too. less alcohol from the ones in the gas station ah. because i believe budweiser and miller are between four and five yeah they are now yeah, yeah. but not the gas station ones in minnesota nope Sad. but now they have, <laughs> but now they have real beer there so i'm assuming yeah. they changed the law yeah minnesota's got quite a few good breweries now and I don't know, is from as a Wisconsin, I, I have to just say like Wisconsin wins, but like Michigan has got like some nationally ranked breweries. I yes. mean like Wisconsin has like uh has like some 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 of the like the biggest up and coming breweries. Yeah. Like we got um big one is third space. Um we got Ale Asylum Wood Ships around the Midwest, you know, but yeah. like Michigan has like founders, which you find friggin' everywhere, and that's good. Uh yeah. Bells. Yeah. super popular and like <laughs> this stuff is like it's so damn good you do not find like mm -hmm. a brewery like dragon's me that goes around and like crafts english style ales and yeah. beers and from what i what read from their website they i guess they also do like some meads and wines and stuff uh they it are called like dragon mead <laughs> and they are delicious the meads are delicious oh yes Ooh. so I've been inviting you up, man. Yeah, yeah, I know. Vacation time has to be a thing. <laughs> Curse contractor yes. work. Curse mm -hmm. contractor work. Yes. 
Yes, I know. I I I really want to go there and just like go to like Dragon's Me would be like two trips alone, one for beer, one for mead. Yes, <laughs> that would. Or you go there and don't come back. <laughs> uh, we have a thing called Uber. Yes. So you start out with two flights, and then you drink the good beer when and. When your taste buds get dull. So, <laughs> I would, uh, at Dragon Mead and Coonan's, I would recommend your first beer to be a flight. Oh, because yeah. five, six percent is definitely the low end, not the average at those oh, yeah. uh, stores. So, oh. uh, your taste buds typically take a beat. <laughs> yeah. And I usually, t- I usually tell that to anybody, like the first time they go to a brewery, like, um get if you're not sure like what to get just order a flight that way you can taste like you know four different things you can taste their ipa their Mm -hmm. um stout their porter uh their ale whatever you know Mm -hmm. instead of just going like i'm gonna have a pint pint of this and you may not like it yes or they may think it's like, oh, this is delicious, and drink only that, and you know, not realize how much alcohol is in it and get knocked off their ass. Yeah. <laughs> I will say one thing that's good for. I, I won't call uh, Dragon Meat a small brewery because they have a decent amount of distribution, but they uh, something that is good that they actually properly do lagers as well, where this one is. They're lager. They just don't brew, uh, brew it the ale way with a, with uh, lager hops and barley. Right. And uh, they actually use like lager yeast and uh, lagers well, bottom fermenting. Right well, there, so. but it's also the temperature control. Right. Yes. So they are big enough where they're able to do that, but you will see they mostly do ales. But they do have the setup for the lager. Yeah. Which is not common in craft beer. N- not very not common. Not in the U.S. No. And if, you t- and if you taste somebody's lager and it tastes like an ale, you know what happened there. Yeah. <laughs> they brewed it um, like an ale. Welcome to 90% of the Oktoberfest that we get here in the States. Yeah. Unfortunately. Or what I like to call the Mocktoberfest. <laughs> yes. All right. Now, since we're basically done with this, uh, ratings, what do you think? Honestly, I'm I'm trying to compare this to the double bug, but I'll say this. It, it has is a little bit more carbonation to like the Optimator from Spotten. But it has far less bite than like a Salvatore, mm-hmm. if you know those uh, German uh, breweries. Uh, but uh, yes, I would for what I want to get out of a Bach beer, which is actually my favorite style. I want to say this is a nine point five, and I'm questioning if I should give it a perfect. Because there's no negative. I'm the yeah. I'm the same way here. Like, like I really. I, I want to know how you would improve on this. I I honestly don't, and I mean it's like it is damn good. It is seriously damn good. Yeah. But man, like I said, I would like to think as a beer drinker, there's a higher ceiling, but. I, know. I don't think I've had one with this style of beer. No, nothing. Certainly nothing. Not a Bach that's this well crafted. This yeah. you know intent. This intense and still like subtle, subtle but prominent flavors. Mm-hmm. Nothing overpowering. And I agree. Somebody who may not like dark beers could just turn around and friggin' love this because it it tastes like it's barrel aged, but it's but like not at the same time. It's so. There's so well many balanced. things that are, I know, it's so well balanced, uh, and it feels like it's got my palate a little confused, but at the same time, I'm like, uh, I'm like, I can, I mean, we're picking that stuff out there, too. Yeah, but I'll say this, it's, um, this is also goes so sometimes you just pay for what you, uh, what you get, because yeah. 
like I said, this is a limited release that they do out only every two years. But this one 12 ounce bottle is only in the brewery and it's uh, mm-hmm. nine dollars. But this is an experience that I don't get it. I have yeah. not found elsewhere. No, so, this is so for the experience, it's definitely worth getting. Yeah, and I'd say it would be a shame to like drink a six pack of these. Oh god! Like these, this is an event beer. Oh, exactly. Yeah, this is something you buy. You say you say like, "Hey, I'm gonna have three of my buddies over. I'm gonna buy four of these bottles. Yeah, and we're all gonna hang out and chill around, and you know, we're gonna have a good time. You, yeah, you have it for an event. You know, whatever events. Like, like if you want what. Would this be like a like a lot of people compare like a cigar with whiskey? Yeah. But I honestly don't want to destroy anything of the palate. No. And so, I, I, but it just has that lounging feeling. Oh, easily, yeah, and like what we're doing now, and I and I believe you find like a like a nice cigar. Like I think uh, if you wanted to like pair a cigar with it, I would say something like um, very mild. Nothing spicy, mm-hmm. just you know something to, something to puff on. Maybe if you can find something that's like a little like smooth and maybe vanilla or something that would complement this. Like mm-hmm. yeah, go for it, but don't get you know don't get some big old like spicy stogie there. Don't. No, you you want clean, crisp palate for this. Oh beer. yeah, easily. But uh, agreed. Yeah, I, I I'm right there with you. I want to I like want to give this that perfect ten because it just blew me away mm-hmm. so much. So no, fuck it, I'm gonna do it. Gets a ten. I, yeah, gets a ten. I will say this, this is perfect. Killed it, Drake is me. Fucking killed it. Round of applause. Yes. Round of applause, guys. Yes. And honestly, when I get back to the state, I'm probably gonna go back and buy a few for reserve. <laughs> Smart idea. Yes. Hey, and if they can keep, maybe you try a twenty seventeen <laughs> against the twenty nineteen. You know, no. <laughs> I gotta learn what storage I would have to do for that. Cause yeah. I. It's a sin <laughs> to make that go skunky. Right. Yeah. That's a sin. I. Yes. Yeah. But I think we're basically uh, finished here. What, yeah. Is there anything you'd like to say to wrap it up? Yeah. Just that. Find this, go to Michigan, find this beer, find any version of it. 2017 or two years from now, 2019, because it's released every two years, right? It's going to be, yeah, so the 2019 will come out in 2021. Yeah. 2021. Because this is 2019 and they brewed this in 2017. 2017. So yeah, 2021. If you can, if you are going to Michigan soon and you're going up to Detroit area and you can, and you can like... Get this. Pop over to Warren. Pop over to Dragon's Mead. Get this guy. Get this. Find a bottle of this. <laughs> I mean, like, okay, nine dollars for a bottle. Yeah, that's. I'm gonna agree. That seems like steep, but I mean, take it from the both of us. This is friggin' fantastic. Mm-hmm. You will not be disappointed. This is something you just sit back and enjoy. And if you can't, you know, get out there next. Get out there in two years and try this. This is this is definitely an experience you need to have, especially if you're a beer drinker. This is just fantastic. Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. Stay thirsty, bastards. Stay thirsty.